Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch of Shalom World, bringing you the news from around the globe. Pope Francis offered prayers and condolences Monday for the victims of the monsoon flooding in southern India. The Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Parolin said Pope Francis is praying for the relief efforts underway and he is mindful of all those who have lost their homes and livelihood. According to local government reports, 152 people are confirmed dead. Another 17 are missing and more than 400,000 people were evacuated by the floods and have taken refuge in relief camps. The situation in Kerala is the worst where the death toll has risen to 76 and about 288,000 have been affected. Myanmar, Pakistan, Nepal and Bangladesh also experienced heavy rainfall in recent weeks. Archbishop Anthony Fisher of Sydney and other Australian bishops expressed their disappointment at the passage of a bill to legalize abortion by the lower house of the New South Wales Parliament. The Reproductive Health Care Reform Bill was passed in the Legislative Assembly by a vote of 59 to 31. The bill allows abortion for any reason up to 22 weeks of pregnancy and after that time, if two doctors believe an abortion should be performed. Bishop Richard Umbers, an auxiliary bishop of Sydney and the Australian Bishop's Delegate for Life, said that despite the bill's advancement, the Catholic Church will continue to provide support, advice and care for all women facing any decision surrounding her pregnancy. After a recent survey found that two-thirds of Catholics do not believe church teachings about the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, Catholic apologists and bishops are stressing the importance of better faith formation programs. Pew Research Study found that 31% of U.S. Catholics they surveyed believe that the bread and wine used in the Eucharist become the body and blood of Jesus through a process called transubstantiation. Los Angeles Auxiliary Bishop Robert Barron said the study made him angry because it showed poor formation for generations in the church. Bishop Barron said, this should be a wake-up call to all of us in the church. Priests, bishops, religious, lay people, catechists, parents, everyone that we need to pick up our game when it comes to communicating even the most basic doctrines of the church. Archbishop Nauman, who is the chairman of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Committee on Pro-Life Activities, gave the keynote address on Monday to a conference of pro-life leaders from 63 dioceses. The theme of the USCCB-sponsored conference was Christ, Our Hope. And Nauman's opening address was titled, Life Will Be Victorious. Nauman warned that our culture and society is facing a moment of great peril, but that the moment is also one of great opportunity. The Archbishop said that abortion is the most important human rights effort of our time and our age. He thanked the diocesan pro-life leaders for helping their bishops and dioceses to build a culture of life. He praised pro-life advocates for persevering on behalf of unborn babies and the mothers who are harmed and killed in abortions. Pope Francis will visit Mozambique, Madagascar and Mauritius September 4th through the 10th for his fourth visit to Africa. The motto for the Pope's visit to Mozambique will be Hope, Peace and Reconciliation. In Madagascar, Sower of Peace and Hope. And in Mauritius, the motto will be Pilgrim of Peace. His trip will include masses and interreligious meetings at several locations, as well as gatherings with political leaders, bishops, members of the clergy and young people. All three countries have a strong Christian presence, as well as a combination of indigenous beliefs. Thanks for watching and for your support. Stay in touch on social media, our app, and online at shalomworld.org. May you walk in the light of the Lord, and may peace be with you always.